Good evening. It's Monday, January 4th, 2021, and we're having another episode of Whiskey with Rich. Today, my guests are Mike Anderson and Kyle Van Lubin from Michigan Kayak Trail and Topwater Series, and we'll bring them both on. Hey, guys. I like that intro music there. That was nice. Uh, that's the first time it actually worked. What's going on? Monday, January 4th, 2021. Oh, someone's got the... Uh, another episode of Whiskey me? Today, my guests are... I can hear... Okay, there we go. Kayak trail and... There's a bit of delay. Do you guys get the sound on? I can hear you. Uh, not here. Nope, I got headphones. Okay. okay. There's a hey, delay. Or... That intro music there. That was nice. Uh, that's the first time it actually worked. What's going on? Can you hear that? Oh, yep. The, uh, you guys have headphones on? Mike, Mike, do you have the yeah, screen on your phone? Right down. Okay. That's better. All right. Can you hear me still? Guys? Yep. yep. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, look at my screen. Anyway, yeah. so the first question that come up. Yeah, try the earphones. You got earbuds in, uh, Kyle? Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, I do. All right, every time, every show, we got something a little different here. There, that's better. All right, anyways, so you guys have taken over the, uh, what was the first one? The, the Michigan kayak trail you started with? Yep. Anyways, so the first question come up. How did that come about? Good earbuds in, uh, Kyle. Oh, uh, gosh, yeah. No, that was, uh, three years back now i think uh i became good friends with tom basically when i kind of got you know into kayak fishing everybody meets tom mullins who started michigan kayak trail a number of years back and so i became good friends with him and after a while i just kind of volunteered to you know help here help there do whatever i could to, to maybe help out a little bit and uh then i think it was spring of like two years ago he asked if i wanted to help out because obviously he always says that he is retiring which he never does but so he had me start helping out, and uh, that was kind of the, the whole story there. So I took over a number of things in the first year, and then uh, that was actually kind of the same year that we started Topwater. So it all kind of just happened as one, and I had gotten quite a bit of advice from him before I started that, you know, just for different options and that kind of stuff. So um, he had asked if I wanted to help out with MKT and just kind of ran them both side by side. All right. And when did Mike get in the picture? Pretty much uh, right away. Um, I think him and I had talked about doing top water together and then I got involved with MKT. And so naturally, since we were kind of running top water together, he started getting involved with that a little bit, just help out here and there. And then uh, the second year that we ran MKT, um, Mike took a pretty huge role the second year. So that's when um, we kind of had a little bit of a couple changes and Mike stepped up and Tom did a little bit less than he normally does, but still never disappears, even though he says he's going to. And, uh, you know, that was that was kind of how that went. It's so uh, hard to walk away from something that you started and you got as big as it did. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he's done so well with it. And, and that's one of the things, too, that he says to me is that uh, kind of as we – Okay, Kyle, I think Mike can't hear us. Is that right? Yeah, that's, I can, we can hear you, Mike, but he says he can't hear. He says he's going to. Check and see if his earphones are plugged in all the way. Can you hear us, Mike? Yeah, he's done so well with it. I can hear you. I'm getting a lot of feedback, though. No, I Let me too. try to. It's, it's the same feedback we get when someone doesn't have earbuds on. Okay, Kyle, yeah. I think Mike can't hear us. Is that right? Yeah, that's, I can, we can hear maybe you. maybe drop Mike out for a second and see if that echoes. All right, still. Yeah. Drop. Okay, still happening. Yeah, I'm not hearing it now. I just muted Mike, and it stopped. So yeah. it is coming from Mike. Yeah. All right, let's yeah, try. Yeah, that's Mike's fault. That's pretty. That's that's pretty typical. Okay. Uh, it's still doing it. Okay, Mike. I'm going to ask you to go back out and link back in, and we'll bring you in. Exit right out of, out of the page.
Yeah, that's quite a that's quite a hey, um here I'm gonna Mike, can you still hear me? Okay. I can hear you too. So exit out of the software and use that link to come back in. That might clean it up. All right, we got some viewers in here. Jeff Beecham from London, Rick Beauchamp, Dave Mall. How are you doing, Dave? Christopher Cantwell. Tim Percy. Oh, he showed up. Okay, good. The Don Roth. Oh, we got a few viewers. Let's see if uh Mike's still got that. Okay, Mike's gonna Mike's out now. He's gonna try and get back in. So Kyle, um, how did the 2020 season go? What were I, that was your oh, first gosh. big full season for uh, the full top water and an MKT. Yeah, yeah. 2019 was kind of like a top, you know, a test for top water. I mean, it went great, but definitely on a, a limited basis. 2020, um, I mean, obviously it was a mess of a year for everybody just because of everything that happened. But we, you know, we made the best of it that we could. Overall, at the end of the year, we had to cut things back. We had to move stuff, but we still got to have a lot of fun. We were able to kind of get things started, you know, a little bit late, but with enough of the the season left that we could still have some fun with it and we could still do a lot of the stuff that we normally want to do as far as you know award ceremonies and that kind of stuff since most of our stuff is all outdoors anyway so overall the year went you know i think as good as it could have with everything that we had to do turnout was definitely lower obviously all you guys over in canada couldn't make it over and you know a ton of you guys come to all those mkt tournaments so that definitely had an effect um and there was people that we lost a lot of people from down in illinois and indiana that like to come up you know so Turnout was a little bit lower, but we kind of expected that. But we were still able to go through, host all of our schedule, have an awesome state championship. Um, Topwater hosted four different, uh, you know, leagues around the state, plus a 12-event trail series. So I don't know how many events it was, but a lot, probably 60 events or something like that. So, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. We got to do most of what we wanted to do, cut it back. It was definitely a, you know, a disappointment just because, I feel like we lost a lot of momentum with everything that happened, but at the end we salvaged it, uh, had a lot of success, had a lot of people come out and have fun and uh, couldn't be happier to move on to next year. That's what counts. I think uh, we got Mike in good now. Mike, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you good. And there's no echo. Uh, that, yeah. yeah that all, sounds better. Apologies on that. All right. Did you find a problem or just going out and in worked? It was my fault. I had my headphones were connected to my phone and the laptop at the same time. So I was getting that feedback from my phone. So. Yeah. Yeah. Be live. Doesn't like anything extra. I've learned that. Already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all my, all my fault. All right. No problem. Well, you're good now. Anyways, uh, we got some more viewers coming in. Um, Brett Bammer, Ian Jones. How are you doing? Ian was my guest uh, a couple of days ago. Dave Poole. Good, good to hear from you, Dave, Sean Naren. And Dave Mull says we're perfect now. Good stuff. So uh, we were just kind of rehashing the 2020 season there, Mike. And um, I, I think you guys, as in a lot of series, they all adapted very well. I don't think – I haven't heard too many complaints about for kayak anglers. I mean, though I couldn't cross the border after March 16th is when I came back after spending two weeks in Alabama and North Carolina, but um, I had a great season. I, I can't complain. I got back into camping. My wife and I are looking forward to camping next year, doing a lot of uh, trips. Uh, to tournaments and that. So wasn't a bad year that way for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, feel like, I Oh, go ahead. I said, I feel like a lot of people kind of kept it closer to home and fished a lot more of those grassroots circuits and, and maybe didn't do as much traveling. So I think it kind of changed things up, but it, not necessarily in a bad way. Well, when yeah, you say I, that, Kyle, for, for me, traveling to Michigan to tournaments is less than what I had to do in Ontario. I, there was oh. the, the, I think I had one event that was an hour away. The rest of them were six or seven. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Holy smoke. That's some travel. For me, I've been looking at this uh, a whole different way. Um, yes, COVID affected all of us. Uh, it affected everyone in a different way, um, especially for these extracurricular things that we like to do, like tournament fishing and things like that. Uh, but for me, I looked at it as it's hard to look at this pandemic as a positive for anybody. But if you can look for the positive, it was I believe that this actually brought a lot of new anglers out uh, joining our local clubs and our local communities and groups um, because they were looking for something to do. Um, 
you know, they were cooped up, couldn't go out and do anything else. So uh, let, why not go fishing? And uh, what an affordable sport for people to start participating in, like these local kayak clubs uh, going out. And, uh, you know, for those people that like to go camping and stuff like that, it was another excuse to maybe travel somewhere new and try something uh, different that was still relatively close to home. Yes. So there, there is some positives to be seen from this. Yep. And, and for me, um, like a lot of options next uh, or this year now, we're in 2021. And um, I'm hoping I can cross by time the uh, East events come up, which we'll get into in a short, short uh, time. Uh, I'd like to welcome Dwayne Gillis, another on, local guy here in Windsor, Andy Bightley, Timothy Michael. Um, rule changes for 2021 before we get into what you got coming. Are there any rule changes? Not a whole lot, uh, if anything. Um, we we made just a couple slight rule changes for the 2020 season, uh, but then heading into 2021, we haven't really messed with any new rules, any new additions. Everything's pretty much going to stay up uh, intact for us. Oh, good. Yeah, I don't think we, we made any any changes to the rule set. Um, last year, we did a few minor kind of clarifications and that kind of stuff, but um, I don't think any any rule changes are going to be for this year. So. The, uh, here's a big question for you. Um, is a hog trough going to be allowed? For the Topwater Series and MKT, we will allow the hog trough and uh, the fish stick for one more year. Um, it's something we had talked about and debated back and forth quite a bit, actually, heading into uh, winter time here after our season was over. And uh, we decided to give it one more year uh, where everybody can participate with those three measuring devices. Uh, but heading into 2021 or 2022, excuse me, um, we are going to make that change as well. All right. I um, I've been looking at some old videos. I've got three or four years of videos I haven't done nothing with. And uh, I found some videos where I was measuring fish, some big 19, 20 inches, and that hog crop bent quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I discovered this already after seeing what happened last in, in March. Yeah. And um, what I did, I cut my board down to 26 inches. I put dowels. There's a size dowel that fits in there perfectly. I even glued it in. Mm -hmm. I can't budge that thing now. And yeah. it was so much easier to use for the events because, because the, the uh, series that lets you use a hog trough made you lay it on the ground now. And I'm not one to put mm -hmm. it on my lap because when I put it in my lap, that fish jumps off every time. Yeah. So I had to put it down on the ground. That's the reason I cut it 26 inches. I mean, if you got an old hog trough, have a look at it. Um, oh, geez. I guess I'm being un-Canadian right now. Uh, Yes, Greg, I, I don't have uh, network TV. I kind of keep track of the internet. So you can keep us up with the score, please, Greg. And uh, <laughs> You're on report. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. How are you doing, Sean? Glad you can join us. Anyways. Um, but you're right. Uh, you know, for those who still want to use the hog trough, uh, putting a couple dowel rods underneath there, they fit just fine. And then they float. <laughs> it's a, you know, that's a bonus to it as well. But we had talked about it and debated, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to go catch exclusive uh, for 2021? And, uh, you know, amongst our inner circle, we kind of voted and uh, we were kind of divided half and half, I think. And uh, we actually had a Topwater Live episode a few weeks ago where we just kind of put it out to the public. And what do we want to do? Do we want to make the switch now or do we want to? go ahead and uh, give it one more year. And I think we decided on the spot in front of everybody to give it one more year uh, to let anglers get whatever gear they need purchased uh, without having to worry about, uh, you know, going out and making another additional purchase. Even though to me personally, I don't feel like that is such a big deal. Um, I mean, with Catch offering numerous products, their Catch carbonate board, I twenty nine ninety nine off their website with free shipping. Plus, you can get numerous discounts from all the different clubs in your area. You know, that's for the amount of money that we spend on fishing gear and setting up our kayaks and stuff like that. To spend twenty six, twenty seven bucks on probably the most important tool on your kayak setup. To me, that didn't seem like that big of a deal to 
set a standardized measurement uh, across the board. Well, the problem over here is we can't get we, we can pay twenty nine dollars US for a board and want to charge us thirty for shipping. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, until someone the thing? comes up with a uh, distribution on a competitive scale, that the hog trough is still going to be the main board here. Yeah, the big issue for me really with the hog trough. I mean, obviously, you know, I had the whole you know bending thing that happened and. You know, everybody was doing all their tests and, you know, scientific studies and all that kind of stuff in their garage to try and prove, you know, whether it was, you know, it made a difference or not. But the biggest thing for me is just the the hand-drawn lines, um, you know, after doing a ton of judging where, you know, some guys get that perfect line in there and then other guys, you know, they're, it's like they're using a huge wide Sharpie where the lines are almost touching because they're so wide. Um, that's really the, the biggest thing for me that just kind of makes a difference is because you're, you're introducing human error and variance and all that kind of stuff. And. So there were so many ones where I'm looking, I'm like, all right, this fish is touching the line, but I can clearly see, you know, the plastic line on the hog trough, you know, because if it's a good enough picture, you can see it. And it wasn't touching that line. So you're, you're introducing that kind of human thing. Now, I know you can get some that are pre-drawn from um, one of the companies. I know that they have hog troughs and have the lines already pre-dark. And that was kind of my biggest hold up is just people drawing in their own lines. If, if you've got a catch board and the lines wear out, you know, I don't want people drawing the new lines just because it adds that, you know, that level of variance and a little bit here or there can make a difference in, you know, a close tournament. Yeah, we could debate the hog trough and the catch board all day long, but uh, bottom line is things are changing and uh, we're going to have to find a way to get them over here because right now it's not, it's not economical. Well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. well, I live about 30 minutes from the border. So if we could figure out some type of way to get them <laughs> across the, the border there we can come up with a way i got a way you launch at um uh what's that road called again there just off of a launch at nine mile and go no 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 a... peach the one on peach <laughs> island there uh, yeah yeah um anyways yeah. you launch off of there and i'll meet you halfway meet, meet me on, halfway right yeah i'll take a load back <laughs> over no right no tax this no nothing new wave international smuggling catch yeah. boards across the border <laughs> no don't laugh that was actually one of the biggest points of humans um human smuggling uh, from about 10 years ago. Oh, so <laughs> people, would, people would take their boats over to Peach Island Park and then another boat in Canada would come and make the exchange and they come back over. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary. Anyway. I think the, the biggest thing for me uh, before we jump off the board subject was I, I've seen a lot of people and a lot of different groups making the point that they are monopolizing a part of the industry by all these clubs going to catch only. And, and again, I, I look back at the, the grander scheme of things and I look at other uh, you know, national sporting associations like the NFL or NASCAR or it, pick anything. Uh, and they all have some type of standardized uh, measurement or tool that they all use. You know, NASCAR using Goodyear tires on every car at every race or you know, Spalding being the official basketball of the NBA, Wilson being the official football of the NFL. And they paid for that. When there's, it, yeah, it, it, you know, and, and there's so many different uh, other products available to them, but those have proven to be the best, or maybe they paid for that. Uh, but us going to a standardized board uh, for a, a tournament, a money tournament, I don't see that being an issue at all when, when those boards are clearly the better product. So I, I hope people don't look at it as a too big of a negative and I hope it doesn't shy anybody away from fishing their local clubs that have decided to go ahead and make that switch after the big KBF uh, uh, announcement. Uh, it, it's just something that, uh, you know, spend the 25, 30 bucks, get yourself uh, a, a nice board if you can, if you're able to. Obviously our friends over uh, across the border are gonna have a harder time doing that, but. It really is a superior product. They typically got to drop 50, 60 bucks to get a board over here. And, and, and wow. until that comes down, yeah, that, that would be a little different, wouldn't it, for you? If you yeah. Yeah, that, that makes it, you know, obviously all, twice as hard. And we all know the majority of kayak anglers are cheap. <laughs> yeah. One of the it's, things we are going to do over the next year and a half. We'll, we'll throw $500 for a combo, but you, you ask us to spend more than 30 bucks on a board, and we're going to squeak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, it's refill time. Give me a second here. <laughs> yep. I don't know. What are you guys drinking? I got the double oak. I'm, cl I'm cleaning up the bar today. 
I got yeah. a little bit more left to double. Can't load. go wrong with Woodford. And I got. I am. Uh, I pulled out this one just for tonight. Which one's that? There we, there we go. Oh, reserve. I don't know. That's but my bottle. bottle. I'm not a huge whiskey drinker. I've had this one for a little while, so we're gonna finish her off tonight. <laughs> okay. This one's getting. I funky. am uh, sipping on some Trevor City Whiskey Company Cherry Edition. Oh, nice. That sounds. And good. it's amazing. It's amazing. Sounds very good. All right. Oh, uh, it is. I noticed in the lineup for uh, 2021, you have a couple events on Lake St. Clair, or is it just one event? I noticed that the KBF events, there's two, it's handful. Saturday and Sunday, but they're separate events. We have a handful of events happening on Lake St. Clair this year. Um, the first event that we will do on Lake St. Clair is kind of our season kickoff. Uh, we we start our league series a, a week or two before, but our, our first big event, uh, two-day event, will be on Lake St. Clair um, April 17th and 18th, I believe. Uh, and that's a two-day event. Uh, that's what we're calling our elite series. Uh, a little bit later on, we also have uh, KBF coming into town for a collaborated event. Uh, it is a technically a KBF trail series event on June 5th and 6th. Uh, but we will be down there to help and support uh, KBF in any way that we can. Um, and then I believe we have Lake St. Clair coming up uh, again um, a little bit later on in our season in July. So a couple of big events, uh, all two-day events, I believe. Down so, there. so you've really changed your schedule up. I, I thought there was just the June 6th event and that, and the, that weekend. And that was it. No, we've got a couple of them down there. It's hard to not continue to go to that body of water. No, I don't blame you. There's a, um, I just noticed there's a boat series. It's called the Great Lakes Bass Series. And uh, it, they're, all the events are in Lake St. Clair this year. So they're, they're just getting yep. going. There's another kayak angling club, uh, technically based out of Indiana, but they've spread into Illinois over last year and uh, up into Michigan this year, uh, specifically for Lake St. Clair. And that's uh, the Grassroots Bass Jacking Club. Uh, and Jim Strunk, uh, he's done an amazing job setting up his kayak series uh, throughout Indiana, Illinois. And uh, this year, they're going to have a series based on Lake St. Clair uh, specifically. So I think five, six events on Lake St. Clair for that club. Wow. Is that the one where you can pick which day of the weekend you fish? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it, you, you have like a week's worth of time uh, to get out there and fish yep. and you go out there and fish during that time period. Yep, I like that. That's that's a real nifty format. It kind of opens you up. It opens up more anglers at the days that they can't make, but they can make another day. For sure. Yeah, the, the, what those guys have put together is a pretty cool format. It's something yeah. different than what a lot of other uh, series are looking at. Just hoping that yeah. that border opens up that we can get over there. For sure. Hopefully. <laughs> we will find out, but hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So it's got to be soon. Now that you talked about all those events, I mean, you guys leaked – a, a, a schedule it's, it was a lot smaller than what you just mentioned but what what are the locations for 2021 are you still doing a west and east series for mkt yes so it, what we do as a whole is kind of a little bit different than what i would imagine a lot of other tournament directors are doing where we're actually running multiple groups at the same time uh our top water series the michigan kayak trail and then new to 2021 the indiana kayak trail so basically three clubs all operating as one big umbrella, let's call it. Uh, with the Michigan Kayak Trail, what we decided to do uh, for 2021, a little bit different than years past, is MKT has always drawn a huge crowd. It's one of those tournaments that 100 you know, person cap, we're going to sell out that 100 cap. Uh, but they've always been predominantly on the west side of Michigan. Um, a lot of that is due to our incredible sponsorships that tie us to those locations. But we have anglers coming from Canada, from the eastern side of Michigan, from down in Indiana and Illinois. Uh, and we wanted to put together uh, an expanded schedule that was conducive for traveling anglers from all over. Um, so we decided to split up MKT for 2021 and do a MKT West, which will have our traditional four or five locations on the west side. And then we've expanded it to an MKT East, where we've put together three locations on the east side of Michigan. 
And then our Indiana Kayak Trail, which is three locations just over the Michigan-Indiana border. Uh, so those locations will all take place in Indiana. So for MKT, we went from the traditional four events with a championship and expanded that into, I think, nine, ten events all collaborate or all meeting back together for that championship at the end of the season. All right. So we've added twice as many dates and locations. Nice. Okay. That's the, that's the look. That was the introduction I saw earlier or at the end of 2020. Yeah. We did a little bit of teasing, a little bit of previews on uh, the MKT uh, release of the, the new West division and the East division and the IKT. Uh, and kind of put out their schedule uh, right away so everybody could get used to that over the winter time. With Top Water Series, we've operated that a little bit different as far as releasing all of our locations, um, especially with our League Series. Our League Series is so much fun. Uh, that's, that's my most fun thing to go do is our League Series. And uh, what, for 2021, we doubled that as well. What are you saying? League Series or Elite Series? What, what? League. Huh? Like bowling league, league. softball okay. league. All right. So when you talked about our, St. Clair earlier, I thought you said an elite day. So that's a league night. We have a, we have elite series as well. So we have many different facets to the MKT and top water All right. umbrella. Okay. Well, you jumped into my next my next questions here. So um, what is the actual format of the top water series? It's it's a lot different than the MK with the MKT and with most of our kayak fishing tournaments we're used to yeah it's pretty different than to my knowledge anything else going on in the in the u.s uh as far as kayak fishing series goes um you want me to run with it kyle or do you want to jump in okay M mike i'm gonna make, i was gonna make a suggestion mike you need to zip out and come back in because you're freezing a bit and we'll let kyle take over a bit now sounds good i'll do that all right thanks it's probably good you did that. Otherwise, I usually don't get too much of a word in otherwise. But uh, <laughs> no. So, yeah, we started the series last year. Um, I'd love to take credit for it. But there's a, a group here in West Michigan called West Michigan Bass. Uh, and they essentially, you can go fish a boat tournament any night of the week, anywhere around West Michigan area, um, primarily around Grand Rapids. But they go south, they go north. And they're just fun. They're three hours. It's a good time. And so two years ago, we kind of decided let's duplicate that idea on the kayak side and see if we can get any type of following. And so we did one season, I think it was uh, 12 events, had a lot of guys come out um, and that was just all based around the Grand Rapids area. So then this last year, we went ahead and expanded it out and we did four different ones. So we had two on the west side, two on the east side, um, a little bit shortened season. So I think they were seven to 11 events um, for each one. But Basically, it's just three hours on a weeknight, uh, same night each week, and you come out, it's a shotgun start, so you all start from the same launch, which I think is a cool thing that kind of lets people new to the sport get a little more comfortable, because that was, for me, one of the most intimidating things when I started was that, you know, you're getting up super early in the morning, a lot of times it's cold weather, because we like to fish when it's cold, you're trying some huge body of water that can be intimidating. And so I feel like it's a, this is a really easy way for somebody to, to get out and try it. And then a lot of people will, they'll bring, you know, their buddies after a couple of times, they have fun and they bring a friend. So essentially it's just this weekly uh, weeknight, three hour tournament. We do an angler of the year. And I feel like that meeting every single week uh, kind of keeps that angler of the year race, you know, something that's exciting and something people are focused on all season, just because it's not, you know, a month or a month and a half between tournaments. And there's a lot of events, so it gives you the opportunity to kind of, if you have a bad night, you can you can make it back up or, you know. And, you know, it's it's a competitive environment, but it's also just a lot of fun. A lot of the guys this year was a little bit different, but a lot of people come out, they fish. We usually have somebody calling out a bar that's local that we go to afterwards for a drink and something to eat. So it's kind of that middle ground of introducing people to the sport, still getting out with your buddies, being competitive, but just trying to make it something that's always fun. And if you have a you know, a bad night, usually it's warm, the weather's good, and, you know, you get head home in a couple hours, so you're not sitting out there, you know, getting skunked for eight hours and, and getting discouraged. Yeah, it looked very yeah. interesting. You, you hit on it, Kyle, where it, it introduces new anglers to the sport. And for me, that that's the best thing we've done through all of our tournament series and the tournaments that we host. 
our weeknight league series offers a chance for the newcomers to the sport to get their feet wet in a low pressure environment where you can come out on a Tuesday night and uh, depending on what division you're in, meet a whole new group of anglers. You're, you're going to learn something. You're going to make some new friends. It's low entry fee, so it doesn't cost you a lot to go out and get started. And on a Tuesday night for three hours, we could have, you know, 30 anglers show up. And uh, it's really cool because you get to see a lot of different things. You get to see different kayak setups. So you can pay attention to that. You can learn what other people are doing and how they're rigging. And what, you know, one of the cooler things we do is we fish on a different body of water every single event. And with us expanding even double into 2021, we'll have eight separate divisions, each running 10 events. All events will be on a separate body of water. So in our great state of Michigan, we're blessed to have that many bodies of water to choose from in a drivable distance on a weeknight. But through our league series, we'll have over 80 bodies of water that we'll be fishing in our league series this year throughout the state. And to me, that's amazing. I don't know anybody else that's doing anything like that on a on a weeknight series. You know, instead of going bowling, come kayak fishing with us. <laughs> well, we don't have that luxury on our side. We, I mean, I've always thought way back before I did tournaments, I thought, could we get together once a week? But Lake St. Clair is not really friendly for a guy to come out in his the kayak that he bought at uh, Costco. Um, sure. And even the weather. So it's it's tough. We our nearest inland lake is Rondo Bay, which is just over an hour from Windsor. So and that's the only one. Um, right. So, that makes it tough for you guys to do so, something like that, you know. It, and this this format it won't work for everybody everywhere. Some states aren't blessed the way like Michigan? That, that, that Michigan is, you know, with the amount of bodies of water that we have, you know, to go fish on and. Uh, but that's something that definitely sets us apart is the availability to uh, the, the newcomers that's never done this before. I, we had guys in our Angler of the Year contention this year fishing in a sit-in Walmart kayak that was duct taped together because it was leaking. <laughs> and they were competing for an Angler of the Year spot in that division. Uh, so it opens the door to, to newcomers to the sport, which was really our goal to begin with, with this league series was the introduction of newcomers to the sport make them feel comfortable enough that they'll want to go fish those mkt tournaments and, and maybe move on and fish some hobie vos's and stuff like that you know yep. just to let us talk to them get them comfortable enough and safe enough that they felt like they could go out and compete at the next level well that's awesome no i, I really like it but unfortunately we it, it's tough for us to do that here and it's tough in most states i think what you in florida have the most most water of any uh, in the U.S. I think so. Uh, maybe Wisconsin. Well, it's it's something too that you don't really realize. It's you take it for granted, but you don't realize it until you know we started looking at uh, you know some other states and, and holding leagues in other states, and you realize you know oh we, we you can't you know you can't do you know what you're doing. And that's where like grassroots has a great idea with what they're doing, where they kind of stick with the same lake um, because you know if you have one area you can kind of base it around that but what we do yeah it makes it where you know it's tough in some areas you're gonna have to repeat lakes or even our own uh like when we did our tri-cities division this year where here on the west side we have two different divisions and you know we're trying to eliminate lakes because we're trying to keep the schedule down and there's too many lakes we can't you know we're, we're arguing over which ones we want to fish and then the tri-cities you know just two hours away they're repeating some because they don't have enough in that area. So, you know, it's, it's something that you take for granted until you kind of start trying to schedule outside of that area and you're, you know, realize how many little, you know, good lakes are around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. I, and that hurts you in a way when I was uh, running the cats Midwest, my biggest challenge was making, finding lakes where there's enough parking. And that yeah. came to play in a few oh, of the, yeah. MKT, uh, the MKT events, having a hundred people, was a big challenge of where people are going to launch from. Yeah, we run into that issue quite a bit, especially with our bigger tournaments like MKT when we're on a, a body of water. It could be a big body of water, but there's still only maybe one or two, yeah. you know, DNR approved launches at that point. So fitting, you know, 50 anglers over here and 50 anglers over there, that it can be tough. Uh, and we run into that with our league night series as well, because we, we tend to pick smaller bodies of water. Yep. 
for our league series uh, because we like that shotgun start where everybody leaves from the same place at the same time. But we've ran into that issue quite a bit. We're parking, you know, maybe the ramp only has 15 spots available for that particular body of water, but we have 25, 30 anglers show up that night. Are you registering those events for, uh, do you have to register the top water events with DNR? Yes. Yeah. All of our events are registered are, with the Michigan okay. DNR. All right. Cause I, yep, I, every, every single one. Are you doing all your survey, all your surveys filling out too? I already did it. <laughs> I, I, you know, with us, we, we ran, I think in 2020, we ran, gosh, what Kyle, close to 80 some kayak uh, tournaments. Yeah, it was a lot. So like you, you did all the work, so I don't so, know. So, Mike, hold on a second. I like to keep uh, Mike, everything updated. Do, do your assets. do your members or your the anglers do they know what goes into like what the DNR has us doing? Because Probably I'm not. privy to it. Because <laughs> just go through it quickly. What, what you, when you have to fill them out and and how you yeah, have to pick out the it, launchers law. and then you got to do the it, surveys. It's a law. Uh, so us hosting the tournament, it. In the state of Michigan, it is free to host the tournament. You just have to go to the Michigan.gov uh, website, create an account. You have to register your tournament for that particular body of water. You have to choose your ramp accordingly, depending on how many guests or participants you assume will sign up for that event. Uh, some lakes we've had to switch uh, because we, you know, there's only 15 parking spots available at that particular ramp, and we have. 30 people registered, you know, so we, we have to figure out parking. We have to figure out locations and stuff, um, all registered with the DNR. You have to choose your dates, your times, how many people are going to be there. Uh, then you have to go back in after your tournament ha has concluded and you have to fill in how many participants were there, how many vessels were on the water, how many large mouth were caught, small mouth were caught, the total number uh, or the total length of inches and how that broke down and there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into just setting up a tournament and, and concluding it with the state let alone running the actual event itself so uh and by law we have to register these tournaments uh we have to go back in and fill out their surveys uh and fill in all that information by a certain timeline or the dnr can come knocking at your door i want to know what you're doing with with these tournaments and since there's money involved there's always that aspect of it as well that you have to stay as you know legal as possible and and follow all the guidelines with the state and i know every state is different i've talked to other tournament directors that are running tournaments in their area where they have to go out and get permits and things like that ahead of time and luckily we don't have to do that here we just have to register on the website i, I think michigan was one of the f f first states to go through that and, and I don't know how long you've been doing it, but I started in 2016 doing the tournaments in Michigan, and it was it was the guy I forget the guy's name is it Thomas? Um, anyways, the guy from the DNR yeah. they 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 got better. Oh yeah, better. They allowed us, you know, at first it was more for weight. Um, and I, you know, I suggested, hey, we're we're doing length, and and they right away they changed it to length. So the the Michigan DNR is great yeah. to work with. I mean, I, I wish. I gotta tell you, and I, I don't care if someone comes after me, but the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources, the MNR, they suck. <laughs> um, you know, they they, That's no good. they don't do any. And, and I understand their hands are tied. It's the government doesn't give them enough money, is what we keep on hearing. The few guys that do work for the MNR are great, but our government really doesn't really support the MNR, and uh, it, it, it hurts. Yeah, that, that's a bummer for sure. Yeah, you know, we, we can't fish Ultimately, for bass. That's hurting the anglers. We can't fish for bass on our side of Lake St. Clair. And when you guys get to fish all year round, and, and you know, the University of Michigan did that study for 10 years before they allowed the, mm -hmm. the catch and release season all year, all year. And it's like, well, you know, I even contacted the MNR and I asked them, I said, listen, they've done a study. I've fished during that 10 years and I've seen the, the bass population has prospered. And you know what the guy told me? This is the MNR talking, and it wasn't that far away in, in Ontario. He's in London because he said it said what office it was. He said, "Well, you know, we're further north than Michigan is, and our and the water's colder." <laughs> if anyone, if you guys look at a map, where are where, where is the Canadian side of Lake Saint Clair? It's just south of right. Michigan. So it's like right. that's the, that's the kind of, <laughs> that's the kind of care that the MNR really looks at us down here. It's not just the gut and the politicians 
uh, you know, Windsor's considered the asshole of Ontario. So <laughs> it's, uh, in, in more ways than one. But anyway, they got a, I didn't they want got to they got a my... casino, so. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, it, it, a lot goes into it behind the scenes before you even get to the tournament date, you know, and uh, luckily our, our DNR and our government, they work really well with us, nobodies hosting these tournaments, uh, where if I go to register a top water tournament for, let's say, Tuesday, pick a date, and there's already a tournament, tournament being held on that body of water, They'll red flag it. They'll shoot you an email and let you know that, hey, the West Michigan Bass Club has a boat tournament on that lake on that day. You know, you guys can work together and figure this out, or you can just go pick a different body of water for your event. Uh, so they do a lot of cool things working directly with us, the anglers and the tournament directors for all these different things that we do. And it works out really well. Uh, in the years that we've been doing it, we haven't ever ran into an issue. Um, DNR has been fantastic to work with. They use us uh, to go out and fish these lakes, find these fish, fill in all that information as far as how many did we catch, large, small, the links yeah. of these fish, so that they can help with us and our fisheries. You know, we work together with them in that aspect that by supplying them with all this information, even though it can be a pain in the butt sometimes, it's benefiting all of us in the long run where they can use this data to, to make our fisheries even better in the future. So. It's a win-win for everybody. All right. I got I got one more thing I want to cover. I heard some rumblings about um, – Kyle, you're going to answer me this question. You guys got your own online app now? Uh, yeah. So we tested that out kind of the later part of 2020 season. Um, it was kind of a beta version, but we kind of threw it in the mix and – you know, explain to guys that, you know, this is something in testing and, and uh, we had some some good results. There was issues just like anything that comes out. But, you know, we continue to develop it even after that beta version was out. So any issues that people had a lot of times they were actually already fixed. But, um, yeah, we have our own application uh, for scoring and a number of other things that we've set it up to do for us. Primary biggest thing of doing that um, really was just to be able to save costs to the angler. Um, we run so many tournaments and so many short and low dollar tournaments um, that it's really just not sustainable to do everything that we want to do with such a high expense of, of paying for, you know, software having large expenses. So even a small tournament that's, you know, a three hour one and 25 guys show up, well, you know, that's still a significant amount of money pulled from the pot that has to go towards that. And with some of the stuff that we want to do, like our World Series of Fishing and, and everything else that we try to create. It just wasn't sustainable. So we started development of an app, um, gosh, I would say early 2020. Um, and then we released a beta version of it uh, middle of the year. We got it out there. We tested it for some tournaments, had some some, some good feedback and some issues and that kind of stuff. Uh, so we began, you know, took all that testing data and we've been working on it in the background, you know, ever since then, even since we released that uh, app. So we'll have an updated version that we will release early in 2020. 21 trying to remember what year it is here and uh that will be what you know we will run all of our tournaments off of going forward um just because it's at no cost to the angler versus uh go ahead including the mkt uh yes yeah i believe that mkt will will be using that as well so. all right i'm gonna For stick my on, a, on a limb kyle you're the software guy mike you're the marketing guy yeah i don't really much. know what mike does <laughs> <laughs> Mike's Mike's on the on the payroll just to fill out all the DNR forms that I don't want to do. I think that's all right. right. Oh, okay. Right. The rest of the time he goes he goes camping. All right. Now I know so, you guys are related too, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Kyle is my uh, brother-in-law. I married his beautiful sister. Okay. Um, and then we're business <laughs> we're business partners as well. Uh, Kyle and I started a, a software development company handful of years ago and uh, have been working side by side uh, ever since. And uh, it's actually got us into fishing together and uh, led us into top water, which led us into creating the, the scoring app, like you just said. Uh, we figured we had all the tools and the knowledge at our disposal, so why not create our own? Um, and like Kyle said, with the top water series uh, predominantly being the, our league series, uh, it, it's a low entry fee, uh, low cost to come out and participate. And 
we found out pretty quickly that charging or, or subtracting that fee to score your fish out of all the registered anglers, that was taking a big hit on the payout. Uh, and our goal was to keep it as cost effective and to pay out as much as possible. So by us being able to create our own scoring app, uh, and again, when we started the scoring app design and, and build out, it was strictly just for us. Uh, we by no means wanted to go out and compete with Tourney X or Fishing Chaos or any of these other scoring apps. We just wanted to save money and, and to put it back in our anglers pockets that were participating in our event. So we built it with that in mind, not so much that we're, we're out to take over the, the fishing tournament scene, but we just wanted to have bigger payouts for our anglers that were coming out each and every week to get more money back in their pocket. Uh, just to score their fish, you know? So it was kind of a no brainer for us to go ahead and develop something that would save all that money. Is there anyone else part of your group? Uh, is it is just the two of you or do you have any more? Oh no, no, we've got a, an awesome team of tournament directors and let, starting at the top, Tom Mullins, uh, we call him the Godfather. Uh, he has mentored Kyle and I uh, for years now and and taught us a, a tremendous amount of not only just kayak fishing, but how to run a tournament series like the Michigan Kayak Trail and, and how to do it the right way. Uh, Tom Mullins is huge for us. Uh, Dave Mall is a biggie. I can rattle off all of our tournament directors' names uh, real quick. Uh, Mike Kitzkowski, Chris Cantwell, uh, Brett Bramer has jumped on to help out with the Michigan Kayak Trail East this year. Uh, our topwater guys, Grant Binnick, uh, is huge. Uh, he has not only been our intern uh, for Topwater over the last couple of years, but he will be big, playing a much bigger role on the Michigan Kayak Trail uh, tournament scene this year. Uh, I know I'm going to forget a bunch of guys uh, that make uh, all the, what we do possible. Uh, for the Indiana Kayak Trail, we three newcomers to our group uh, this year. Todd Voorhees of Red Oak Jigs will be a tournament director for IKT. Um, Cole Garland will be yep, a tournament cool. director for IKT. Um, he was our MKT Rookie of the Year, reigning Rookie of the Year this past year. So he has jumped on board. And a, a name that you all might know, Jackson Orr, will be our tournament director for the IKT Trail down in Indiana this year. So I'm super excited about all of the guys that have jumped on board and helped make everything we do uh, run as smoothly as it does. We oh, could not nice. do good, this. good. Good. We could not run close to 80 to 100 events without these guys and their help. It just wouldn't be possible. Well, that's great. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for coming on. You, a lot of information. You answered a lot of questions for me. Again, I'm hoping that Absolutely. border opens up. If you guys can tip your glass and have you know, put it right in the screen there so I get a nice thumbnail out of this, whatever you're drinking. <laughs> there you go. All right. There you go. There we go. Right in the screen. I know it's tough. Move your glass over there, Mike. <laughs> There All you right. go. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, and Thanks thank again. You, Cody Hart. Is I, there any, I, I mean, do we have any Cody Hart? Do we have any questions that we missed here? I don't think Let's so. See. I saw one up there earlier um, from Rich Simmons that was asking if we were going to be running a head to head bracket this spring. And uh, absolutely, yes, Rich. Um, last year, we ran what we called our Michigan Big Bass bracket where we took the March Madness style of basketball and had a 64 angler bracket where we gave each angler one week to fish during that week head to head against another competitor in that bracket, the winner moving on. Uh, we had big success with that. The bracket sold out immediately. Uh, so this year, instead of a 64 angler bracket, we've doubled it to 128 angler uh, bracket. That'll kick off Gosh, I think the first week in April, um, it's on the main schedule. But uh, the Michigan Big Bass Bracket is back for year number two. Um, I saw that question. I don't know if there was any other questions that we needed to help answer. Well, uh, there was a few others, but I tried to kind of grab them as we were going along. There was a few making fun of me, so we'll just ignore those ones. But uh, <laughs> a couple people asking, uh, Colbertson asked about when the leaderboard is coming in the app. Oh, so that'll be there before the season even starts. Um, yeah, that's, that's already guys, done. Uh, You'll see that next time you use it. Yep. Yeah. A couple guys right. just asking questions about some, some West Michigan based stuff. So 
Good. I think on the big scale, though, I think most of them got answered. You can follow these questions on you know, the comments. Any 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 questions we missed, you can go into the comments and answer them there. They'll be on my page. All right. And if anyone else has sounds more good. questions, go right ahead. Yeah, cool. sounds good. Yeah, I tried to answer most of them. All right. Anyways, guys. Uh, Sean Bulger had a couple questions, but he said he was uh, too nerdy to ask. So uh, feel free, Sean. That's why you're here, man. So uh, I think he's going to leave that. Let him leave it. All right. we'll, we'll get all your answers or all your questions answered. Just post them up on Rich's page or post them up directly. If you have a direct question, we're happy to help any way we can. Okay, guys. Anyways, thank you very much. And uh, like I said, hopefully uh, we won't be looking at a screen at each other. I'll be able to come over and fish with you. Yeah, I hope so, so, man. I still, I still have your... Uh, border city classic check and your trophies sitting in my basement because it's so expensive to ship them over to canada <laughs> so i'd like to be able to hand those off well you just hold on to it and i i'm gonna make it over there if i got to get that i think i was talking to kyle earlier if i got to get that vaccine so i can travel across i'll get the vaccine then there we go <laughs> same all, all right guys 10-4 thanks rich appreciate, appreciate it man take care cheers Thanks, brother. Good night.